This is Math 142, and we are taking a peek at section 8.4. This lecture is broken into two parts. This is part one. And this is about parametric equations. So para parametric equations, um, in rectangular equations, we're used to having things in terms of like x and y, right? Just these two variables related to each other that gives us a bunch of points of the form x, y. With parametric equations, we actually have a third, or, or maybe even sometimes more, but at least one extra variable that kind of runs the other two variables. So t in this case is what's called the parameter. It won't necessarily show up when we go to graph it, but t is, um, you can almost think of it as like time in some cases, it could be anything. But um, parametric equations have a parameter that run the other two variables in it. So here's, a, here's an example right here of, some, of a parametric equation, um, a set of parametric equations. X is equal to t squared minus 3t, y is equal to t minus 1. So notice that we still have x and y, so we could still uh, graph it. Whoa. We could still graph it, and our, our graph will be points in the form x, y. And this is how, how we write it. And notice that t only runs from negative 5. Uh, to 2. So I have t, and when I know my t values, it will give me some x and some y values. So notice that like if t is negative 5, what I can do is I can take that negative 5 and, and plug it in here. So x would equal negative 5 squared minus 3 times negative 5, which, let's see, what's that? 25 plus 15, 20, 30, 40. So x would be 40. And y would be, well, t is negative 5. Negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6. So when t is negative 5, x is 40, y is negative 6. So we could have this point, 40, negative 6, that happens when t is negative 5. And we could go through and get other values too, you know, like when t is negative 4. So this would be 16 plus 12. This would be negative 4 minus 1, so uh, 28 and negative 5, and so on. And notice that in this particular setup that we have, y is changing linearly, and x is changing uh, as a quadratic, quadratically. So um, we could go through and keep doing these. Uh, you know, we could do this in order. If t is 0, notice that x would be 0 and y would be negative 1, and so on. We have all these points. And then what we can do is graph these points. So let's do this on Desmos. Let's take a peek at what this might look like on Desmos. And uh, before I do this in Desmos, Desmos has a funny way of, of writing them. It's, it's actually kind of clever. It, it actually just takes it as a point, and you just enter these in. So notice x is t squared minus 3t. So in Desmos, I'm going to have to write this as x is this and y is this t minus one so i'm actually writing it as a collection of points we'll write it we'll write it this way desmos takes it this way so let's see it was t squared and one thing i want to add is it also automatically throws in this uh range of values for t so i had it run from negative five to 2. And so notice it gives me this collection of points. t doesn't show up in here, but t kind of gives me positions along the way here. Remember when t was negative 5, I had the point uh, 40, 2, 4, 6, negative 6. So I'm just going to do this so we can kind of think about what the parameter does. I'm going, to re, I'm going to rewrite this so I can move a point along there. So what I did is I just added this, um, this little dynamic piece and I turn it, put it in terms of a so I can change my a values and see what happens. So notice when a is negative 5, it's this point right here on this, on this curve. And as I change it, my point moves along that curve. So if you thought of t as like a value like, like time, as, as we ran from, from negative 5 to 2, this is where the point is along that, along that curve. That parameter gives us the points. So it almost gives us a time element and a direction to this. In other words, I have, I have these t values 
that make things change in this direction as t increases and it comes around. This would be really good if we were doing some sort of maybe a parabolic flight or something like this. And notice this negative 5 to 2, that gives us a limited piece here. If I change this from negative 5 to 5, we get a longer trail, or negative 5 to 10 even. Gives us a longer piece in how our, shape, or how our point goes along that curve. So these are specific instances of when t has a value. This para, uh, parametric equation is all the points, all the t values in that range of t values. And this is how parametric equations work. They give us a, a collection of, of points. It's almost a locus of point definition, like, like in a circle, you know, all the points that are equidistant from a center. This is all the collection of points uh, when t takes on these values. So let's take this, this parametric equation, take a look at it. So what's interesting to me about this one is x is changing linearly and y is changing linearly. Let's, so let's take a peek at what that might look like. Let's look at this in Desmos. And I let t go from negative 10 to 10. Notice it gives me a straight line. So I want to take this parametric equation and just write it in rectangular form. And remember, rectangular form is what we're used to, x and y. So basically what I want is no t. I, I want t gone entirely. Well, I can do a little substitution with this. I notice that, that uh, y equals t plus 5. So how about I solve this for t? I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. So I end up with y minus 5 equals t. And now if y minus 5 equals t, that means whenever there's a t, I can replace it with a y minus 5. I can do that substitution. So basically, I can solve one of these equations for t and then plug it into the other equation. Let me do that. So I'll rewrite this as x equals 3 times y minus 5. Again, notice what I did is that's my t value, 3t minus 4. I just plug that in for it. Now, for for us, um, you know, you could you could leave it in this form. I'm I'm okay with that. If you just leave it in that form, you don't need to manipulate it or anything. But I'm gonna take it a little further just to just to think about this for a sec. Distribute that three. And then I have um, x equals 3y minus 19. Now, if I want to get y alone, I can add 19 to both sides. So I have x plus 19. And then I still have this 3y. Multiply everything by a third. A slope of one third and a uh, y-intercept of 19 thirds. So let me go back, zoom in on this a little bit. And that's... That's about 19 thirds, that point right there. And if I look at my slope, one, two, three, over three, up one. Now here's what I like about this. Um, there's my, my 19 thirds. Notice also, this goes through the point negative four, five. I can see that because when t is zero, there's a point negative four, five. Additionally, if I think about the slope, as, as t changes by one, right? If, if, as my change in t is one, notice my change in x is three, so it goes over three, and my change in y is, is one, it goes up one. So this is going over three, whoops, over three, up one from there. So the slope of one third that I, that I got in my equation matches it. So let's take that first parametric equation that we worked with, and then let's um, try and change it into rectangular. Solve one of the equations, solve one of the two equations for t, and then substitute it into the other one. So this one looks pretty easy to solve for, for t. I'm going to add one to both sides. t is equal to this. 
So that means I can replace these t's with that y plus 1. So x, whoops. <laughs> so x equals t squared, well, t's y plus 1, minus 3 times t, which is y plus 1. Now, on an exam or something like that, I'm fine if you just leave it in this form. That's that's not a problem. If you do wanted to, um, you know, clean it up a little bit, you would square this. So you'd have y squared plus 2y plus 1. Distribute that negative 3 minus 3y pli plus 1 and combine some like terms. So x would equal uh, y squared minus y plus 2. But again, if you want to leave it in this form, perfectly fine. Let's do one more. Let's take this, this parametric equation, change it into rectangular. So I could solve either one of these for t. And notice in this case, if I solve the, the y value, the, the y version, the piece, the y equation for t, I'd end up with square root of something. So I think I'll solve this one for t. Just add 2 to both sides. And now I know that t is this. So what I can do is substitute that into the other equation. In other words, this equation y equals t squared plus 5, but I know that t is x plus 2. And just like last time, you can leave it in this form if you like. This is a nice form, actually, because it's in that vertex form. I know I have a parabola with a vertex that's negative 2, 5. Um, you can multiply it out, too. If I square uh, x plus 2, it's x squared plus 4x plus 4 combine those up and it's equal to that. So there are other parametric equations of you know kind of other other types to deal with. So for example if I look at this one where x is equal to cosine of t and y is equal to sine of t, um, it's not going to be quite as easy to do that substitution. Like if I try to solve for t here, I get inverse cosine of x is equal to t. And if I try to plug that into here, I have sine of inverse cosine of x. Oh, it's awful. No, that's not going to work. So when we have sine and cosine in our parametric equations, what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of a relationship that we know. And that relationship is uh, we know that, that cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. So what we can do is we can manipu manipulate both of these so that what's over here is a cosine squared and what's over here is a sine squared. And in this case, it's pretty straightforward. I can just square both sides. So in this equation, if I square both sides, I get cosine squared is equal to x squared. And here, if I square both sides, y squared is sine squared. So notice if cosine squared equals x squared, these two things are equivalent to each other. So wherever there's this, I could replace it with this. So that's just an x squared. Similarly with a sine squared, sine squared is y squared, so I can replace this with that. And it's in rectangular form. Let's graph these and check them out on Desmos. This was cosine, and this was sine. And notice it's only running from 0 to, to 1. So that's not so great. So I'm going to run it from 0 to 2 pi. And it gives me a circle, which hopefully makes sense. This is basically our unit circle. x is cosine and y is sine. I said it was equivalent to x squared plus y squared equals 1. And it is. You can see that they're, this, they're the same thing. So my strategy for taking something that is uh, parametric and in this form, x, y equals cosine and sine, is to manipulate this so it's a cosine squared, manipulate this so it's a sine squared, and then substitute those values into here. Let's do another example like this. So I have uh, this equation, x equals 3 cosine t and y equals 2 sine t. Let's see what that looks like on, on Desmos. And notice basically all that it does is these multipliers, it stretches it by 3 in the x direction, stretches it by 2 in the y direction, and we get this ellipse. So what would that be 
rectangular. Well, I want this, I want to manipulate this so it's just a cosine squared. So what I'm going to do is divide both sides by 3 to get the cosine all alone. Now I can square both sides. So it looks like um, cosine squared t is equal to x squared over 9. So this I can replace with an x squared over 9. Plus, uh, similarly with this, with this y version, I'm going to divide both sides by 2, then square both sides. So sine squared looks like it was y squared over 4. So there it is in rectangular. And notice it is uh, an equation for an ellipse. Let's just do one more of these sorts of parametric equations, turning them into rectangular. Remember what we're going to go through is cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. So we want to get both the x and the y terms in terms of sine squared and cosine squared. So I'll take this, this first one with the x. Looks like I could just subtract 1 from both sides. And then I want it to be a sine squared, so I'm going to square both sides. So I know that sine squared is equal to that. So sine squared can get replaced with a x minus 1 squared. And cosine squared, notice that's a negative co. It's already squared, so I'm not going to have to square it. Notice it's a negative cosine squared. I want it to be positive. So uh, let me do this. I'll subtract 2 from both sides. I get y minus 2 equals uh, negative cosine squared. Multiply both sides by negative 1. So if I negate this, I get a negative y plus 2, which is the same as 2 minus y. I could write it either way. So that means that this is 2 minus y, or, or negative y plus 2, same thing, plus that. And there's my answer right there. I don't have to manipulate it any further than that. So remember, when you have a sine um, and a cosine, in your x and y values, what you're trying to do is you're trying to isolate the sine and the cosine, make sure you have a sine squared and a cosine squared, and you can just do a direct uh, substitution to, into this Pythagorean identity. Great, give these a try, give practice, practice, uh, post any questions that you have in the forum or message me.